<laughs> so, so did we, did we play the music? Yeah, we played the music. <laughs> so we're, we're, just, we're this right. is we're your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. good job. That, was, that was excellent, man. Episode twenty or twenty-one or something. We're on. We're twenty-one twelve. So, what is it? 20. Episode twenty-one twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, minor disturbance radio. And thanks for tuning in again. Uh, as you see, we're all uh, we're in the same clothes as the last episode. That's just because we're scumbags. I went to wardrobe. Yeah. Scumbag. Jeff's the only one that went to wardrobe and had a wardrobe change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's in his contract. Well. He's like, look, I can't be in two I, episodes. Not doing it. By modern terms, uh, putting that bandana on just made you like hardcore as fuck. So like, maybe legit. Mad, you get you get mad respect to show. That's right. Oh, I think you're totally sexy like that <clears throat> I'm legit and i'm in touch with my sexuality enough to say that well the dude well, thank in, you, Brian. Appreciate the dude that. in wardrobe uh <laughs> was, so it is a dude <laughs> is a dude and uh she was drooling <laughs> <laughs> well that's because she's oh, drunk Jeff. but <laughs> she's <laughs> she's got a problem with that sometimes <laughs> so check it out you know we, we do this podcast and we talk about music and stuff and uh we have a good time and, and i hope everybody else enjoys listening to it but uh I made the mistake sometimes in the morning time when I get up, I get out and I, I, you know, sit out without the kids and the quiet outside, you know, and I drink some coffee and I get that nice coffee buzz going and I get my phone out, just kind of look at it and go, who am I going to fuck with right now? Who can I fuck with? Who can I text? How can I get something moving? A ball rolling or something? Uh, yeah. What am I going to do? What am I going to yeah. do? Okay. And I'm all hyped up on caffeine. Yeah. So I, so, so I look up, <laughs> Agitate. I, I get thinking in my mind, mm, who would I want on the show that I probably couldn't get? Um, Greg Dwyer. Greg From, Dwyer. Wouldn't that be badass to, yeah, have, wow. to have him sitting here and we can talk about how his job really is? You know what, dude? Would he tell dick and fart jokes? And like, well, you know, uh, like, absolutely. We wouldn't make him you know, get into the whole discussion of anything bad like that because we know that he's under contract. You know, He has to well, sure, but, maintain a certain... But I'm sure that he could tell us some of the behind-the-scenes right. stuff of being a morning DJ like that and what it takes because sure. obviously we have no, no. fucking clue. <laughs> right. Why would he take time out of his schedule to talk into a microphone, which is what he already fucking does, <laughs> to come down here and then be like laughing at how fucking you know not professional the setup is and fucking why, why would he do that? that? Why would he do that? Why? I think that that's think so? I think that that's yes. the funnest part of it is he, he's going to come he feel liberated and he can say look on his show he can say look there's these poor guys out there trying to do a radio show right it's not even radio it's like video video or whatever it's a video whatever they're doing it's a podcast whatever the hell that is yeah and they're begging <laughs> me to be on their show yeah. you know do you think he'd cuss? No, I wouldn't I would, expect him I, to. I wouldn't want him on if he didn't cuss. Well, I would I would go into I'd with some that. ground. To get him on the yeah. show, I would It'd have some either. ground rules for everybody. Right. And that is we would represent ourselves as he is representing himself. And I think that we still could get some really good information. I mean, I'm interested in finding out what it's like to every day have to do a show. Right. Oh, yeah. First day, yeah. you know, in the morning, how early, how early they're up, how, you know, what they have to do to get the show right. ready and all right. that stuff. Right. But my point is, so I email him um, with my coffee buzz. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize this was already sort of yeah you know in so the works been the elaborate. wheels are in motion the whole time <laughs> so i figure since i saw him at sturgis and he said hi to me that we're best friends now so right. I, I, uh, he knows my name he accepted, i'm brian he brian's my, my name <laughs> so he, he tagged me in a picture yeah like, no he didn't bros, do, he didn't do that far then we'd be almost lovers if that happened but <laughs> shit. no he uh he's a beautiful so, man though. so i i email him i'm like what's up dude like <laughs> what do you think of minor service radio and he, and is that, it like, is that it, how you think you sound? It, it, no, that's how my that's how my text that's always text sounds. Voice. That's his text voice. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? What do you think yeah. of my show, man? My show's awesome, right? <laughs> so God like, damn it! Early nineties like surf, bro. Just like, so uh, yeah. I send a text to to to. to uh, Greg Dwyer and I, and I say I'm all, I'm all cockied up you know with the coffee and I just said something like would you you know I sent him an episode two weeks ago and I got no response so I just said if you ever get a moment check this out that's all I said right and then two weeks later I, I text him again I said well, you must not have liked it we're a bunch of buttholes I know <laughs> sorry right. and then uh, he and then he, he responded and he said no you know the last thing I'd want to do after Doing a radio show all the time is listen to more radio. Yeah. Right. So sorry I didn't listen to that and uh, you know and then I said oh, I'll just give you a couple little snippets. Of, we, got, we got video. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I this is gave, better than radio. Yeah. There's pictures. Yeah. I gave him the then I gave him the uh, you know I, a couple links to the little short like Paul Stanley farts thing that we did and right. and this and that. <laughs> and, <laughs> 
<laughs> so you know, and I thought maybe that would be enough for him to kind of know. Okay, they're just being a you know a bunch of buttholes having fun. Right. Anyway, so the response is, I was like, "What do you think of the episode?" And he's like, "Or what do you think of Minor Disturbance Radio?" No, I'm sorry. Here's what I said. I'm sorry. It's getting to me. The it's cloud back. of confusion. It's back. I said. I said. So. Would you like to be, would you be, in, I don't know how I said it. Would you be interested in being on our show? Right. Minor Disturbance Radio. And he said, uh, it, you know, some hours went by. And I said, oh, I got something in my inbox here. It must be Jacob Gregory wanting to be on the show again. And, uh, <laughs> He's such a pesky. Again. Pesky. He's Come on, man. Pesky. No, We're having no, fun now. No, yeah. no, you're all good. So, and I've, oh, it's Greg shit. Dwyer responded to me, man. Well, oh, what nice. is this going to say? I'm waiting for this big old, yeah, dude, it's fucking awesome. Dear or Brian, something. Yeah, I'll be no. on your show. Something, something totally positive. It just oh, said, Greg. here's what it said. What show? <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Boom! Boom. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, uh, just yeah, you know, yeah. sorry. Just when you're feeling good. You know? So that's yeah. a, that's a no. Uh, no, yeah. it, I'm not getting anything here. Where, where it stands right now is at, here, here's what he actually did. So and, there's a chance. So here's what here's so what you're saying is maybe maybe. So I read you. What, what he ended up doing was he he watched the last episode, and then, uh, you know a little time went by, and all of a sudden I get this email, and it's a really long one from him. And what he did was he listened to the entire entire episode at he eighteen. He fucking listened to the entire and he, episode, and he fucking crib noted everything that he thought about everything that we were saying throughout Holy the whole episode. Holy shit, wow. dude! And I want to read yeah, it. it. I want to fucking read it, dude. And he, uh, and he, no, it wasn't, it wasn't negative nor positive. I know, it was actually it's just a very constructive. I it, bet. Well, I, I think what he thinks I'm trying to do is really try to be some sort of radio right. uh, character or something. I'm right. just trying to be Brian Minor talking shit. Right, I'm not a professional he's, broadcaster. At but all. he's just, good at it though. He's the he's one of the best. Yeah, you he's know, really so good at uh, it. in our area. But he he gave me a lot of pointers of how to be a better host and and how to keep the flow going and and this and that. What what he doesn't understand is the flow is the flow. Yeah. We don't. We just do it, and right. there's not. This isn't really a show per se. Like we're da, 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 da. now right. bring out the next guest and blah blah. You know, we're not doing that. Right, right. But I still would be interested in talking to him about his well, job and how sure, hard that well, actually it is. It might be. It might be interested to see how a person who has really evolved their technique around the kind of commercial limits you know because that's right. their whole real thing is that they've got these limits they got to say the ads they got to talk about the sponsors they got to you know everything's timed you're always under the wire and our show is not that way and in a certain way that's got to be disconcerting to somebody who is you know really knows how to work those limits to make it so that you can have these chops and these bites and these you know snippets that all kind of makes sense and all kind of flow together. And without that, if it's just some but fucking buttholes, you know, yeah. like you like you're fond of saying, standing around talking about things endlessly ad yeah. nauseum, ad infinitum, you know, uh, that's not necessarily going to work as well. You right. Know? And so I emailed him back. I emailed him back. That's what I mean. Well, for him, it's sure. not going to work for him. You know, I emailed him back and said, you know, so I'm, you know, I, I was all jazzed up on caffeine. Sorry. I shouldn't have even asked you to be on my show. That was silly of me. Sorry. You know, I mean, that was really kind of, I was reaching sometimes I, the fear limit. Just, I don't care. I, no. If I had Paul Stanley's number, I'd be like, dude, you want to be on my listen, radio show? Listen, you know? listen. Hey, listen. I got, no, you know what though? I have Tony Danza's number. Maybe we <laughs> can get him on the fucking show. But what's he going to say? No, at least you asked. I know. And he probably wouldn't be able to do it. But then I right. threw it out there and said, you know, well, no, then he responded to me and said, dude, your show is really cool. I like it. I like the vibe of it. You know, with the, some minor refine. Not, not yeah, minor, sorry. I see what you with did some, there. He didn't. He didn't. I do see it. what with, you did there. With some. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway, some refinements. Right. Uh, he could see it being a uh, uh, show like a local show on uh, 97X or something like that. Right, right. Like He could he, see it being like that. that. He it's... said his exact words. He remi It reminds him of when Mark Dettel did this similar thing on 97X. Oh, right, right. That's said right. it has kind of the same attitude, right. except right. for Mark Dettel could and say fuck cunt shit bitch well we should have my Dettel. we should have Dettel pot. on dude. redskins pot. oh there we pot. are Dettel, Dettel has always been a <laughs> supporter and he's a cool dude yeah. and i'd love to have him on man yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put i'll put so, my boat in for having Dettel on. so so that's my uh answer. my brush with him and then i uh i then the final thing i said to him was you know we would absolutely love to be on your show and haven't heard from him. So, <laughs> <laughs> which I, I don't blame oh, him, a, man. Maybe that, he's thinking know, about it. If you're going to be in a position of power like that, you're going to have to expect yeah. some punk kids to come after you, trying to leech off of your power. Absolutely, you know? so. man. But I mean, you know, uh, it does kind of call into question this sort of old world idea about how to 
you know protect information and uh you know it, it kind of speaks to what's going on with uh with people selling albums and things like this and it kind of speaks to what's happening in radio and why radio has really kind of begun to suck for the last you know however many years and you know why it does you know why the radio sucks i have some ideas but please <laughs> It's 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 a it's a playlist that I've been hearing since I was able to understand music. Right. It's Don't you think though that there's a board of people that when they put their money into such a business like Clear Channel that they have a consensus out there of what the majority of people that is. listen to radio That's the problem. No, 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 That's I exactly the hear. problem. They're not they're not forging new trail. They're No, not, no, no, no. They're yeah. what they're not doing is they're not paying attention to musicians. People that make the well, art, sure, but you know, it, I don't know that that's fair. They're generalizing. I don't know that that's they're fair. They're generalizing. They're saying that really? our, our numbers are this at this time. And yep. this is the people in the workplace can only listen to this because they know it's going to be clean all the time. They know it's going to be the same stuff, nothing off color. Like all of a sudden they're going to play, uh, you know, slave to the grind. That might sure. stir up some offices. Well, you know, sure, right, like, yeah. But that's just it. Like that marketability, th being that standard in an office, I, I, having work jobs, where mix ninety six or you know whatever was was just you know they they just put that through the entire PA and I'd work all day like washing a car so yeah. listen to mix ninety six and I knew Cheryl Crow songs that I never wanted to know but I you just knew it you know what? Right. Cheryl Crow's but, awesome get off her there, but there, but there's <laughs> when it comes to local shit it's it's all in marketability and and it's proven time in and time out that original music versus music you know 80s music 90s music 70s music whatever a cover band will go in and play three hours and make five hundred dollars a gazillion dollars a gazillion uh, 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 an original band will go in and play an hour and a half and make on a good night you know 100 150 dollars or cost you 100 150 bucks right right depending on pay. the venue yeah. and pay. the situation right. absolutely right right so sure. what are you getting at with that what does that come to radio why does radio suck because the radio focuses on a set listenership. And, and, and yeah, it, it sucks for people like me where Spotify works for me. Because I can go on Spotify and I can just type in a band name. Well, and, that's the whole point is you, they know that people like us are going to seek our music. And we, we're, not the, they're not, we're not the listeners that they're going to try to sell tickets to Gumbo Yaya to. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Or whatever that is, the promotion that they're right. trying to promote. Right. My point is it's an untapped market. Okay, well, it's a hello. Huge, well, well, I'm no, I'm going to say, it, but it's a huge untapped market. But I, I mean, the term that I would use to describe that market is diffuse. That you know, that these the people that like a certain type of music and sort of agree with each other about that. That might be that one song from that one band might be the only thing they agree on at all. Sure, and sure. if you begin playing anything that seems like that music, it's just not going to work. They're right. not going to be able to agree. But with if that. you have a station. You're wanting money. Greed takes a hold of it. So I, I well, agree with that. that's what I mean. That's, There's a board that. of executives yeah. that yeah. know exactly what playlist works yeah. the fucking right. best it's in every economic and demographic. And that's why that's why Clear Channel has been as successful as it has. It's and, a huge and entity. It's, and and it's for huge, you to say, hey, will you play my stuff on your radio station? They absolutely cannot no, anymore. Absolutely, they don't have any say in what they're right, playing. Right. Do you remember? Do you remember Friday Night's Cage Match, local cage match? On, I remember that. Uh, on, yep. was, it, was it Planet? Yep. Was it Planet at that time? No, no, no. I don't. I don't think so. I think I thought it was ninety three Rock, man. Was it ninety three? And, I, and uh, was it was it CJ the DJ doing it? Well, he yeah. was on it, and he he's doing back. It? He actually just started. Doing yeah, he's back in radio. Which is really? Cool. Yeah, which really. is cool. CJ Crawford, man, a guitar player. <laughs> and by the way, and I, I am no to, in uh, no uh, civil bounds. Anarchy. Thank. I'm sorry. Not, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't civil mean to anarchy. interrupt. Fuck uh, you getting mad at me, Travis? I'm fuck you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Civilized you anarchy. You know what? That's all what? I wanted to say. You know, speaking to the point about about the difference between how it is that radio exists as what you might call a reactive market, which is a market that tries to look at what the kind of, um, you know, inertia or legacy or, or what it is that people are already doing and then pander to that versus a market that wishes to develop new groups of people by well, right. putting things out there and trying mainstream, to find out what things are going mainstream on. Mainstream radio is not a creative entity. No, I no agree one, with that. I no agree one with that. wants to hear. No one it's wants an to outlet hear for the, it's out, it's right. an outlet for the most sure. popular fashions. That's all it is. I, I agree. You I and agree. I are the creative entity and we chase our own kind of music. We'll find it and we listen to that and if it were on the radio all the time, we wouldn't like it anymore. 
Well, of course, of course. Did you just do the? Mm hmm. Yeah, girl. No, no, no. And, and I'm not. The, the suggesting that the suggestion that I'm making isn't to try to say that radio should be something other than what it is. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm suggesting is that people who look at radio and think that it should be something other than what it is, don't realize that there are these other outlets that are much better sure. adapted to doing it. Sure. Things like either going out to a live show sure. to see some local shit, and it's band already camp. starting to happen. Band, band, band camp, camp. You know, all that Even stuff. at that, fucking Pandora. All I know is my even... favorite my favorite times on radio, so I just jump around the radio and change the channel. She looked at me, she said, how do you know I didn't want to listen to The Doors? I said, because I know you're not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but it's rare to hear someone else that doesn't <laughs> like the doors. She likes the doors, I, though, actually. I can't fucking stand the doors. I, I can respect so. the doors. I can respect I'm the doors. Like, yeah. But, like, any Riders time I've ever seen anything that said, like, Jim Morrison was a uh, great American poet, I'm like, what the whatever, fuck dude. have you been reading? Riders yeah. on the Storm <laughs> is the only thing they got. Yeah, I didn't. I don't like the doors either, but, you know. It's, everybody's got their own flavor you know what I mean yep. some people oh, yeah. no, uh, attach to it I know my music sucks I know my favorite shit sucks dude I figured it out and as a result then I'm not ashamed of it because I already know it sucks and I'm not ashamed of telling other people that their shit sucks and or realizing <laughs> that the suckiness of their shit is exactly at least as sucky as the shit that I like I mean that's it we're all equal we all all of our scenes suck all of our music is bullshit, but it's just what we like, so that's all we need to that's, know. That's that's truly the reality of it. That's all we need to know. The that's whole, the, the shit whole, we like. The whole yeah. scene thing. Yeah. Here's the deal. Like I, I've got a little bit of a uh, of a of a, a box I can get up on this, but the whole scene thing. Like I I play in I play in a QC metal band. QC scene. QC metal. So there's QC metal. There's QC hardcore. There's my point is my point is all of these different. Um, we'll call it. I mean, they're genres, but we'll call them sects, sects. Of, of 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 the Quad City music scene. All are very proud of what they do, and they're very proud. You know, yeah, but QC metal band, fucking QC hardcore, blah blah blah. You know, and whatever. And 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 the people who are doing cover music. You know, like like you said, like you you know, you've got Die Bomb. Uh, I, I know Chuck Murphy. I know Doug Brundies. I know all these you know these cats that are doing their thing, and these guys are hitting the turf. Sometimes three, four, four or five times a week, you know, and and, well, and they're doing three hour sets. Wow. Yeah. A QC hardcore band like uh, The Outsiders, for example, they're a, a, a very good band, a great live show. They'll come out and they'll do 45 minutes and that 45 minutes is all you need. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and wow. it's 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 a crazy difference between. The cover and original shit, but all these different divisions, we get all they're doing is fucking us up. We and get in arguments because we should be sort of uh, helping each other, I guess. Well, when you talk about original music, I, I agree with you. I think that you know the scene helping itself or whatever. I think it's something that's never going to happen. It'd be a beautiful thing, but listen, man, you 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 might have something special going on in your little sack. But I'm telling you, in the grand scheme of the business in this Quad City area, in the music business, sure, there is rivalries left and fucking oh, right. Know. People backstabbing, lying, fucking stealing gigs, yes. and fuck. They ain't nobody helping nobody. Here's the only you. way. Listen, the only way that another band's gonna help another band is if they're below them. They'll never support you enough to surpass their popularity. That would never happen. As soon as a band starts to take more popularity than them, they're gonna start to fucking put up their dukes and I they're gonna don't disagree. start talking shit. I don't disagree I with do. you. I don't disagree with you about that um, being a, 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 a likely reality. I don't think it's the only reality, but I think that in a lot of cases it's a likely reality. But it still kind of speaks to what it was that I was trying to get at when I was talking about radio, which is this idea that somehow uh, not, you know, somehow placing limitations on how you promote yourself and everything around you somehow that's a superior way to not just going out and promoting yourself and everything around you you know that that in in the modern age there's so much media there's so much media we're we're drowning in it we're drowning in it. this show you're drowning in this show you know because this is another voice that you can listen to another voice of millions 
you know so many bands so many thanks for shows. selling the show travis i know wow. i'm here to say i know i know this show sucks don't tell them don't, i know don't this tell, show don't sucks. tell them there's other shit they could be listening to right That's now right. yes and, and edit that out because because here's what here's i never got to my whole mathematical premise about oh, everything God, here sucking. we go man so so here's my Saddle mathematical prem, premise all right for those of you who understand what a reciprocal function is that means that it is a value that is an operationally inverse quantity of a primary quantity okay i'm gonna break that down what that means is it makes it so that you can do division and get the same answer that you got when you used to multiply and what i the reason why i bring this up is because Right now, if you realize that yourself and everyone around you sucks equally, that is actually the inverse function of being great and everything being great and being able to find value in everything. Once you realize that we're all equal on this despicable level, then you can realize we're all equal on this great level. There's nothing to stop you from being able to help the band that might surpass you i can't There's nothing, argue with that fact. you know what i'm saying that's that what was, i'm getting at man that was beautiful travis okay that was well, beautiful that's, travis that's my mathematical that was, point <clears throat> i'm gonna edit that whole thing out <laughs> it's never gonna, it's never gonna we, make well, the episode <laughs> no. everybody here, here go fuck yourself. you know what i'm gonna start moving around my microphone so you can see the fucking continuity errors <laughs> <laughs> edit this brian yeah <laughs> exactly the that, mathematical that's uh, i'll just, I'll just so put in a, i'll just put in a still picture of you, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? like, Right. Green screen. No, sorry. <laughs> so w that's a beautiful thing, and I love that right. premise. I love that premise that you guys speak of. But I'm telling you that it's a that would be a unique function. And if one of the bands in your sex started to spring, I bet you there's at least two or three bands that'll start talking shit about that band. Well, here's the deal with that. Here's the deal with that. Um, and, and this is definitely not a toot my own horn sort of situation. But here's here's the real shit. I, 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 I'm in two metal bands. I scream. That's what I do. Yet, I'm here. I'm here, and I'm here among friends. We got past what everyone's about, and we got to the, the core of shit. We're all musicians. You know, we're all people who appreciate music, and we can talk, and we can coerce, and we can cohabitate. And beyond that, we can make a show out of it and actually have you know, unique and insightful conversations about it. We're all about different shit. I, I can't expect you to be like stoked on the fact that White Chapels, you know, just put out a new album and stuff like that. But at the same time, you can't expect me to be like stoked about the fact that Careful. Motley Crue's going to put <laughs> he do one Motley last tour. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a poor example. I know it's a poor example because you dig on the Holy Grail. You dig a holy grail. That was awesome. And you everybody keeps telling awesome. me, you need to get that record. The whole record's like that. The whole record's like that. And I'll tell you, I listened to that track, and I, I knew it was cool, and the dude was hitting height notes and stuff, but I still, I've got to hear it a couple more times to see if there's a hook in it. Sure. Because yeah. if there's no hook, it's useless to me. If it's just a bunch of people playing their instruments well, and uh, somebody kind of hitting some high notes here and there, and talking about uh -huh. demons and dragons and shit, I'm not going to buy it. I brought that up to you last episode, and you, you totally thought that was, fucking poo-pooed me, Yeah, but man. you thought that was Dream Theater, and I'm, tell, I'm here to say that Dream Theater has tons of hooks i'm not saying they don't reverb <laughs> i'm not saying they don't but i'm but i am saying that you can understand why a person is skeptical you know just because you deliver all these superficial traits it doesn't mean you're the thing it just shit talker he is he's trying to poo poo that <laughs> but let's get here i want to get back to my my whole point was um you know take 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 for example you know in this area right now we have you know three years hollow is popping off sure you know they're on they're on the road and they're living that dream you know i and i'm not going to name any names but i can't i can't tell you how many times everybody's like man yeah they're awesome and then four seconds but you know, uh, and then they have right. something that they have to say, and I know, right. I know right then when that happens, you're doing something right. Yeah, the jealousy seed, and that's fine because you know it's happened to me a gazillion times. My my whole life has been full of people saying, Brian Miner, 
Oh, you talked about he's an asshole, <laughs> and you know, and these people. I've heard that. And yeah, I honestly, and, yeah, I, bet have, like, I, I bet you have. I bet you have. I bet you have. Yeah, no. And you know what's funny about that is I thought to talk to you about this earlier. Was that even when were you we were all, at your worst we level of fucking assholeness, you were always cool to me, Brian. Everybody be like, Brian is a dick, man. I tried talking to you, he didn't fucking even look at me, and he told me to fuck off, you know. And uh, and but you were always cool with me, Brian. And you know, well, I'm it was saying, a, it that's was a, a thing where you weren't trying to talk to me 10 minutes before I was about to go sing a set well, shit, and talking right? to me about things like dude my cousin's uncle's dog's dad fucking plays guitar too man and fucking they're awesome dude they played Eruption without even practicing just listened to it once and then he yeah, fucking right. did it right. you know, and I gotta stand there and listen to that over loud music right. and try to have some sort of witty response to that which right. is I just kind of want to say yeah who fucking cares right. Well, and, and, that, right. and, that, and that has happened Probably to every single one of us. In this and and most of that so person. Like, but listen, the, 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 most of the people that say cares. that I was an asshole, they probably, some of them have a pretty legit reason. But I'll guarantee you, and this is going to sound really arrogant, but there's a, there's a big population of them people that do it because they're jealous of me. Sure. And that's the bottom line in the story. Uh, and sure. once you learn that, that these are people that just want to break me down because they think that I feel I'm up. So they they look at me and they go look at him with his long hair and fucking playing an original band and yeah. thinks he's a drop hammer this is, guy blah, blah. and I giant have, horse cock. I have I have a lot of pride right. when I walk into a room I have pride in what I do I don't think that I should have to go out of my way I don't think I should have to go out of my way to act like somebody I'm fucking not and I'm gonna talk to you how I'm gonna talk to you and if you don't like the way that I present it then you're not my friend anyway fuck you you don't sit at my table word up you see what I'm saying so I'm with that dude. I would never have somebody come to me. And go hey yeah. brian man your music's awesome and i would say dude i ain't got time for you i would right. never do that No, of course not or even if they said hey brian what's up dude how you doing you would I be always all like, have a response to that i do you? not have responses to what you think of the new halloween record you know i, I don't fucking want to talk about that right now i, I gotta sing and you know or or whatever it is or, yeah. or maybe i don't know you well enough for me to and a lot of it right. is I'm, I'm too worried about how I reflect to people back then. I was too sure, worried right. about it, so yeah. I started turning into a different person. Absolutely. Because I didn't want to be myself because I didn't know who that was yet. So now I'm the you same just wanted dude. To make, you didn't know who you were. You just wanted to make sure that whatever it was that you seemed like wasn't the thing and that listen, you was like listen, the wrong thing. Most of these people, I thought they were assholes too. I know they're right. assholes, bro. You know, I've just built a legacy of having a lot more people call me an asshole. <laughs> well, you're out there so, in the public eye. So anyway, that that's the that's the what I get. You know, I went through that where anybody that was under I say under me when meaning that they were vying to be in a position that I may have been in in their minds, like like at that time. At that time, yeah. at one moment they thought that oh well, Drop Hammer's getting attention and Brian must think he's badass. So I'm gonna go ahead and just talk shit about it. he must be an asshole. And 99 percent of these people didn't even fucking ever talk to me. They right. never walked up and said a word to me. They just looked at me and said, he's an asshole. I've had girls tell me that, that were yeah. wives of band members just that I've been in. Think, walk right up to me and said, shit. I don't even know who you are, but I think you're an asshole. Wow. And I said, nice. for, for what? Just the way you look. Wow. I'm like, really? See, now, Brian, I've gotten, I've, gotten nice, really? I've gotten nice and close to you, and I have to say, uh, you are the best smelling asshole I've ever met. <laughs> I work on you that. Really, no, right, like, you really smell. For a serious, for a serious man, like. Like a fart. Wh whether, but not an asshole. Whether or not, like, we, we concur on our everyday listening and stuff like that, like, the fact that I'm here right now and I'm here in a room with people that are actually listening to what I'm saying, not just waiting for their moment to talk, you know what I mean? Like, it. it, it 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 it, uh, it speaks to your nature and and that's and that's fucking awesome, man. Like it, it's it's great, and that that's my overall point. Is it's so much easier to just be supportive. It's so much easier to give people a chance than it is to segregate via you know via genre via scene or whatever like that. Totally. And that's 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 my whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why I said the things that I said because it's the whole thing. Is, stop thinking your thing is so fucking special and great that you got to look at everything else that isn't that as if it's bad. Exactly. Realize that your shit is on the same fucking level as what you think sucks, and then you can see the greatness in everything. The heart's there. The heart. The heart there. is there. The heart's there. Well, I, it's, you know, that's part of what attracted to me. Uh, to what you're doing and the gang of people you have around you is because you have a don't give a fuck attitude and I relate to that now because like I said I mean when you get older you start realizing that uh, 
You don't have to put on a show for everybody. Hell no. It's better to be yourself in every flaw that you have because you're going to gravitate towards right. the people that truly love you. Yeah, that's people the show. So, yeah, and that's the show. That's the show. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like for me. That's my catharsis. You know, I mean, that's that's my performance. Is I can go up there and I, you know, I am who I am right now. This, you know, smiley, fun guy and stuff. Like you get me on stage, you can put a mic in my hand, and I'm playing my music. I'm I'm fucking angry. Like there, there are no faces. <laughs> they're targets and. At the same time, there can be moments where I, I just like reality hits, and I just I see I see you know a bunch of people like cheering, I see a bunch of people enjoying themselves, or I see a bunch of people just staring back at me, but they're there, yeah, and that's enough for me, and and I don't need I don't need you know as much as I'd love the tour bus, and you know oh, here you we know, go the, the here, comes. Shit. here it comes I don't need it I don't need it right because this. This is amazing. Yeah. To be able to play, like, the show that we've got coming up, like, to be able to play that. I might play that for 60 people. I might play that for six people. Well, but I'm those in, six people are be having a good time. Sure. And that's what I'm in the washed up sure, club, so my my <laughs> angle on things is you're still going, is a bit jaded. Yeah. I'm like that grumpy old man that won't dude. let kids walk in their yard. Yeah, get the fuck out of yeah, here! Right. <laughs> you got them kids with their but, but you're but you're open minded enough. Smoke a cigar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're you're open minded enough to have you know have someone like me on. Absolutely, and, and I, you know, like even I though he wears this white is, headphones, this which is, really isn't the way we rock things. You support 1152. You've played the last glimpse. You played tons of stuff on here. Well, like I said it's a different time now there's a lot more stuff coming out that's respectable Fuck i mean i come from an era where there was a lot of fucking hack bands yes. sure. that were trying to act like they were tough you know and i, I might have been in one of them i don't know but i just know that there was a lot of stuff coming out that was shit it's still, it's and, still there you know yeah, and then them there. people wanted to hate on me because I, you know i was trying to do my own thing and you know it just gets it gets redundant after a while now there's actually a pool of talent that i'm hearing coming out of here and you recognize and it. i'm very proud of it because it went through a really stagnant time there for a while like i said i talked about when they had the pits and all the original music stuff sure. and then there was a big lull in original music mm -hmm. a yeah. big lull yeah and now it's kind of having a resurgence i see more people at your shows like 1152 shows your shows and that than i see it cover gigs i'm telling you i've seen lynn allen gigs before where there's not as many people that would be at an original show and i'm not ripping on lynn allen it's just no. the way the business works right, right oh, now fuck it, fuck mm -hmm. you know uh the same time the same time your your best show your best show is three times the crowd that my best show is maybe right now Right, but I'm right. telling you, that exactly. crowd, yeah. the crowd for original it's, stuff is growing. When when yeah. my wife and I went out to see 1152 and uh, all that it, with the release up there at the Rascals. Sure. The Rascals. The, the Rascals. Rascals. Um, that place was fucking packed. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You oh, yeah know, they got a good following. I mean, Drop Hammer used to be able to pull like that, too. But it kind of, towards the end, it started, you know, it started to thin out because most people that knew of us are now in their 40s and they sure. ain't got time to fucking, I can't go see your band anymore, Brian. You know, you got to work. You know, you're still doing that. You know? <laughs> really, are really you, Thursday you night, Brian. Thursday night. <laughs> really? No, fuck, never man? Thursday night. Brian. Never. <laughs> are, are you familiar with Leftwich? Absolutely. Leftwich. That's one thing Play that I keep overlooking guys. when you talk about the, the the local scene. Them guys have been around forever. Fucking yeah. they, and they and they are still the nicest, most humble people in the world. You know, they've I've gone through their Craig, incantations. I played two shows with those guys, and every single time I played with those guys. They know who I am. They're 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 there during our sets, having a great fucking time, respecting what's going on, so it's and, and, uh, and, and the feelings are mutual. And and they're super appreciative people. And that's that's the core of it, man. It's well, they've been they've been in the trenches for yeah. a long time. Well, who's that's in that the point? Who's in know? that band? Let's call it out. We got uh, Craig Baker. Yep. Is he still playing guitar? Craig Baker. You got Lyle Leftwich. Lyle, fucking Lyle. Now is uh, is Doug still uh Doug still in Doug there. still in there? Doug. Um, Norris. Doug Norris, that's right. Yep. Um, great dude. Co-worker of mine, actually. Um, nice. And then uh, who's playing drums? Is it, uh, oh, I can't do is it Brian? Brian playing drums for him? No. I don't know for he sure. hasn't played drums for them probably for a long time. Brian. But I mean... I get Facebook. It, it was... Um, <laughs> well, they, didn't they have to get a new singer or something? Yeah, they got it. Because yeah. Doug used to do the vocals. Yeah, yeah okay. Right. And he was, right. he was tight, man. Like, the first time we played, Doug was doing vocals, and he killed it. Yeah, yeah. Got, I mean, them guys, dude, them yeah. guys never approached me like if they wanted to come on here and talk some old day shit, man, whatever, you know. Dude, I mean, they've been around for. That's what sets you apart. That's what sets you apart, and that's that's my whole point. Is is like you're you're not dividing, man. You're not you're not just being like I only support the people that are into my shit. Right. <laughs> <You support everybody. laughs> well, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> the doors, the doors that open. Is, is amazing man you know it's just it's just being supportive and accepting here 
so this weekend I got to play at uh, Sturgis in my cover band, and which is which is a biker rally down by the river. Oh, dive bomb, dive bomb, yeah, at which Sturgis is on the river. all eighties, you know, hair metal stuff, and and they had us uh, the Friday night we played after Great White. Oh. Um, in a side tent, you know, at Rascal's tent, and that was a blast. Because the crowd, as they're leaving from Great White, you know, they happen to come by, and I was like, all right, first song out of the gates, guys, you know, like some Motley Crue tune, like, you know, Kickstart My Heart or something that people, hey, fuck. Because i be honest with you, after Great White, I think you could have farted in the microphone and it would have... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, I you know I know a little bit mean. Listen, it, it is, but listen, I, Jack Russell did actually a pretty good job now, singing. Which is, which, oh, oh okay. Jack Russell. Is it the was singer. Jack Russell. Yeah. He, now he was he the singer for Great White yes. during the night. Okay, he's the original I did, singer. I did not up to this point understand yeah. the difference between the Great Whites. So yeah, it's the Jack Russell Great White. You know, people that, that constantly listen. Their, their guitar player did like a seven to ten minute classical guitar solo, which I completely appreciate. But right. most of the crowd that was there just kind of died. Was oh. it like nylon string or? It was clean channel on the guitar, I think. I wasn't watching. I was too busy, you know, shining my pants or whatever. Polishing your pants? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jack Russell did it. Well, first Jesus of all, he came out He came out in a wheelchair, okay? Oh, shit. Oh. And, and, you know, he he tore his Achilles tendon or something. And, okay. I, I, you know, that shit happens. The show must go on. And so, but this guy's riddled with pain pills. You know, he's he's pill drunk as a motherfucker mm -hmm. really? and the only way that you know is just how he talks hey uh, hey what's up Moline port you know or whatever and then uh then he when he sang though he sounded just like the record he sang right. great right. right um for you know i was never a big great white fan to begin with so um uh, eh. okay. anyway so they got done we had a really good night we played there and a couple times i found myself what my point was is in this business and doing this rock and roll thing sometimes you have to take time to just separate yourself from the situation and just right. take it in and and realize that you're lucky mm -hmm. you're blessed and this is a beautiful thing that uh people are having a good time with you you're, you're extending some music to them i looked at the river the lights from the centennial were glaring off the river it was beautiful the, it was beautiful that weekend the weather was perfect it's a great yeah. setting and just feeling it and i just had to go listen look at this you know i'm i'm 41 years old and i'm still doing my passion i know that at a capacity that i wish you know it was a lot greater i would love to be a almost retired rock star by now but there's something even more beautiful about being just a normal dude and getting to live that kind of dream for a couple hours here and there and then returning back to your sanity and having right. a normal life it's because right. you earn it it's because you're earning it it's not something that's been given to you it's not a contract you're going out there you're booking the shows you're hustling yeah and that's 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 what it is for me too man like i could play for five or five hundred people right but whoever's there is there to is there to enjoy the time and i did this i, I did yeah. this i did this with my friends right and here we are and we're and we're doing our shit and it don't matter man because you get to go out there and you do your thing and you're unfiltered yep my whole yeah my whole thing was i was just taking in the whole um ambience and the luck of just being able to still do it and have people still pay attention mm -hmm. and just feeling that for a while and feeling really happy and proud yeah. of yeah. just being in the business still you know we, we right. need that man we, so we really and in the second night we played after or before warrant we were direct support for warrant 1152 was in oh, front of us on the main stage on the main stage on the big stage and 1152 absolutely killed it like they always fucking do yeah yeah my buddy brad my my uh, my renter brad uh hey what brad. up brad hey brad brad smith uh he said he saw 1152 for the first time, and he was quite impressed. Yeah. He thought that they were a really good-sounding band. They Absolutely. Are. They are. And then we had to follow that with uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Unskinny Bob right. and shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody's like, really? So, yeah, I got to do that, and I just I just remember standing on the stage just looking out, because there was heads all the way from the front of the stage, all the way, I mean, it just looked like a sea right. of people. Awesome. Whether they were paying attention to us, yeah, there were some gaps here and there. They weren't pressed up, going crazy, but right. we were exposed to that many people at That's once. Fucking is, that, is that the biggest crowd you played for? I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. Me personally, right? Just any band. I don't know. I, I try not to weigh things in that. In that, I just go with the moment. And right now, I've got a whole bunch of faces looking at me. Right. And I'm going to try to perform as best as I can. You know, and and try to hit these high notes as clean as I can. Even though the wind's blowing right in my face, my throat's dry as fuck, and I'm nervous. You know, because let's get it straight. It doesn't matter how confident you are. You still get a little nervous before a show. Shit. I if you time. didn't, you're not doing your art right. Right. I yeah, pace. I'm I pace. 
I pace for probably about like five to ten minutes before we go on. Yeah, like they'll be they'll be they'll be checking levels, and I'll just be walking back and forth. And yeah, and a lot of you're times just going over everything. A lot yeah. of times, you know, to get back to this, you know, so I had a beautiful time at Sturgis, and and I, I remember being on the big stage and watch, and watching that whole crowd, and uh, looking at the river and just taking it all in. It was beautiful carousel in the background. Sure. Sometimes, and I thought about my daughter, you know, on the stage, like she wants to ride that really bad. I'm so fucking lucky. I get to get done with this and then have people, you know, know who I am and, and just kind of feel special because that's really what it's about. Sure. Yeah. You're on the big stage. You got a laminate on your pocket. You know, you're fucking yeah. feeling all big and shit. Yeah. And then uh, you get to do that. <laughs> and then you get to go kiss your daughter good night. That's great. Man. Well, kiss her good morning. You know, hey, whatever. You know what? That's better so, than a lot of guys get. Yeah. For sure, man. Fuck yeah. Me. For sure. Better than my dad man. got. Yeah. I mean, you look at that sort of stuff they did. How did so. Warrant do? Did Warrant you? was, I thought that they were very, very good. Their new singer was really really a professional you know you're never going to be the original guy nope. but i thought he was he was in good shape uh wasn't a slob hit all the notes sang it properly the way it was supposed to be he's a, he's a good vocalist and, and yeah it was it was really good show i was really surprised i didn't expect much from him but they were really good huh. so really because the lack of janie lane is that what you sort of had you be like oh i don't know well i would have i liked him better without Janie lane but i mean hey yeah. you know oh. well, it's, okay it's janie lane like What's the last thing Jenny Lane did? He was on what? A Didn't celebrity, he tour with celebrity? Celebrity rehab or something like that. Well, he did Maybe. a Saints of the Underground album with Bobby Blotzer and a couple other yeah. dudes in his own, th- own th- album. But I thought he toured with Skid Row. Is that not no true? He, no, he did do he a couple shows did. actually with Great White. With Great White. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yep. Yeah. I don't know who was singing for Skid Row when I saw him then. Um, and mentioning Skid Row, Jeff brought up a subject about uh, the Mr. Sebastian Bach. Oh, yeah. And being on a TV show called uh, Sing Your Face Off. Sing Your uh, Face Off? In which yes. what they do is they t- they make you uh, spin a wheel or something, and it yep. comes up with the singer, and then they dress you up with makeup and the whole thing yes. as the singer. Right. And so far, Sebastian Bach has been Willie Nelson... Lady uh, Gaga. Lady Gaga, the dude from Maroon 5. Yes. And uh, what was the last one? Was he the dude in Queen or something? Yes. Yeah. He was yeah. Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah. He did and Freddie Mercury. Yes. Yeah, and they made him look just like him. But you could still tell it was Sebastian Bach singing off. underneath it. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting there. Had it. You just shut that shit Freddy. right off. That's Freddie. That's, yeah. Yeah, That's I'm looking. Fucking Freddie. But it's also Mercury. Sebastian it's, fucking Bach. Right. <laughs> it's more about watch how, watch how we make these celebrities do shit for money. That's what I Sure, right. And that's that's really what it boils down to sebastian bach is trying to position himself and i love the guy man one of my favorite singers in the world he's positioning himself to where he wants to be kind of like a a brett michaels character to where he's worth more because he's a tv star too yep right and at the same time he is completely pushing me into a hole of fuck i can't say sebastian bach anymore don't do this dude yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it, dude. But you, you know, you're hey, still Sebastian Pot. Now let's put it in perspective. I mean, there are a lot of people that had comebacks, you know, second halves of their career that during that lull in their career between when they were initially famous and then they became famous and everybody respected them, everybody loved them, and everybody thought that they were a legend and blah blah blah. That had the opportunities been available during that time, who knows? Johnny Cash might have done that show. You know, Springsteen might have done that show. Springsteen might have done that, Springsteen might have done that Petty. show. Yeah. Anyone. You know, all these people, you know, and during the lulls in their career, they might have done that shit. Springsteen man. don't have to do shit. He don't have to do shit. <laughs> they call him the boss for a reason. That <laughs> motherfucker's right. got more money than the United States. He does. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> he you know, that's and, no, and he, he keeps fact, touring. No, he, he gets touring. paid in euros. I don't know if you know that. So, uh, you know, but, I uh, is it uh, who's who's his drummer? It's his new uh, what's that? Max Weinberg. Max, yeah, Weinberg. That's right. Mighty Max Weinberg. Weinberg. Yeah. I was at the steeple gate up here and I was going in to talk to somebody about something and they were passing through. They stayed there the night before. Shit. And so I got to say hello to them. Oh, sweet. And to me, that was like cooler than fucking shit. Cause like, Oh wow. And and I'm telling you, they came out of their, dre- their uh, hotel room and I'm not shitting you. They, the dude behind him who was in the E street band too, or whatever, right. two bottles of Jack Daniels, fucking half empty. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. Sat, shit. I, I swear to God, they were partying, man. Yeah. It was for real. Party, it was yeah. for real. You can't do that shit forever. That shit's for real. Tour bus right out front. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. No, no. Yeah. Look what happened to Clarence Clemens. I mean, yeah. he didn't make it, man. I mean, yeah, you look, never know who you're going to run into. What's, what's his name from the Stones? 
Mick oh, Jagger? Yeah. Keith Richards. Richards. Keith Richards, dude. Keith Richards, what, he gets his blood cycled out every year? Whatever. Yeah. That, dude, dude, that, that dude's dude. going to survive a nuclear exchange. Saying, I just want to... That, that man he'll right there... It, he'll catch it, throw That him. man proves right there that drugs really aren't that bad for you. <laughs> yeah. Shit. It's He's all bad. been a bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Six. Nikki Six. Same same exact way. Yeah. Nikki Six. I, I mean, like, I don't care for Nikki Six. He has a radio show. Right. On uh, Loudwire and stuff, and... Six cents. He yes. just he just sounds like an obnoxious prick, but at I've the same time, I thought he sounded that dude. That dude has right. told what does that make me sound like? like <laughs> he told he told. Well, I've been meaning to tell you. He told stories about like uh, you know like some Tony Montana shit where he just had a plate of fucking blow in front of him. He just <laughs> stuck his face in it, <laughs> and then like oh, David God Lee damn. Roth showed up and went zippity bop, and then like did, you know did a couple lines. You know like that's the shit I like to hear, man. Exactly. Some of the stories, like I said, yeah. if I ever had a chance to interview a real like rock star like that, yeah. not, not, not like you're a real rock star, but somebody that has <laughs> I don't have any coke stories, twenty so plus yeah, years yeah, of road right. stories, you know what I mean? I would sure. be asking them the shit that they don't want to talk about, right? You know? And that's the shit I want. I don't want to know when their next record comes out. I've talked about this. Sure. Anyway, let's get to uh, we have the viewer questions, Sweet. and this and this time on the podcast they kind of went awry. Uh, you know, people I guess are afraid to ask us questions. Maybe because they could do it in person the next time we're at Music oh, Around or something. Right. Because we are just ordinary buttholes who yeah. actually walk around town. <laughs> but uh, a couple of them. You were guys the, walk? Yeah. <laughs> still. Yeah. The first question that we got was from Shannon Choning, which is our biggest fan yes. in the world. Yeah. Shannon. Who's you know involved in the beer chug that we're going to get to after the, after the viewer whatever. Questions. So, the first question we got was from him, and he asks me if... My hair is longer than Terry Hodges's hair, which is my drummer and drop oh. hammer. Oh. And uh, does t- does uh, does Travis use turtle wax on his head? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you mean like the hair on your head or like pubes? <laughs> Either way, pubes? man. I don't you know. Terry's pubes Either are longer? Which head? Which head are we talking? It, about? First of all, let me answer the question he had directed to me. Okay. I don't know, but Terry has some pretty beautiful hair, and I have some pretty okay hair, and uh, really. <laughs> really that's what, Shannon Tony, and, uh, that's what you got that's, yeah. that's what you got yeah and uh Come on, son. okay you know maybe in the uh late 70s when it was a big uh giveaway free giveaway on uh, game shows uh turtle wax was an acceptable thing to use on your head but in the modern age of organic foods i use all natural organic carnauba wax so <laughs> That's Check how it out. I roll. It's at your, it's it's, at your local high V organic section. That's right. In the health food market. So All right. go down there and get it. Okay. Well, the next question is, thanks, Shannon Choney, for the uh, yeah, completely ridiculous question. Yeah. Thank you, Shannon. You're yep. still a friend, buddy. We love you to death, man. By the way, patent pending on the uh, Carmel <laughs> Wax. Yeah. I'm the originator of that. But there's, <laughs> there's a Bud, what's his name? Bud B, which has no pictures of himself on his Facebook. You go to his page, there's no pictures of him. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sold that this might not be somebody from so, a competitive band or a so competing this is, band. Is, this could be some an, dude naked in an uh, hot office like chair. Data with his He's trying dick to like find out. something like. Right. So, All right. So, like, how could, many hard drugs? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. But okay. B, put up a picture of yourself. Bud. Okay. Quit hiding behind that shit. All right. Anyway, his question is uh, digging the cute. Uh, the question and answers. I, w- I should probably pull this over to the screen so I can see it. There you go. Yeah. All right. So it's, he wanted to know, number one, uh, what is the groupie scene like for local bands? Hotties, <laughs> hotties or notties? Are chicks pres- uh, pursuing band guys? <laughs> I can't wait to answer this. You guys go first. Uh, I can t- I can tell you. I mean, now, Travis, you have experience with this. Probably, you know, it doesn't exist pretty much. Yeah, I was gonna say no. Um, the yeah. answer is no. Yeah, girls don't pursue guys in bands anymore. That went out with the '80s, and anymore, if you're in a band, you're actually repulsive to most chicks. <laughs> so, um, no, the the groupie scene is is dead. 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 Unless you're fucking like David Lee Roth. Right. You know, then all of a sudden all the sluts are going to come out of the woodwork, you know. No, but no. For local bands. Mm. Honestly, any serious, uh, any serious relationship that I ever had that lasted more than, you know, one night. Uh, the guitar playing was something that they were like, oh, you play guitar? <laughs> you yeah. know, like they had no idea. <laughs> for the most part, no for idea. the most part, women are attracted to money and power. And there isn't a local band that has either of those things. Right. <laughs> right. A certain type of women. I, I yeah. Think that's true. <laughs> I'm Luckily, not, I'm just I'm saying with, the ones, the the ones the that put out, you know what I mean? They're Sorry. waiting for, they're waiting for warrant. You know, yeah, or whoever. yeah, right. <laughs> they're like, why isn't Janie Lane showing up back here? Yeah. Where did he go? 
Here's the here's the He's deal with the, 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 the local the local groovy scene. Um, as far as my end of things are concerned, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a married man, so like it's not something that I'm necessarily concerned with. But um, anytime you're in a position where your voice can be heard, and and you're just you know you're being pure about you know you're being open about how you feel about stuff, whether it be you know, you're writing some super emotional stuff or whatever, but you're up there and you're throwing down. There's an attraction that happens to that, whether you, whether you right. wanted to or not. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not here to be like, yeah, but you know, the chicks just dig it, bro. You know, or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, they're lined up when you come off stage. It, it, you know? right. It's definitely not that case. It's definitely not that case. But at the same time, you dig your own grave. Yeah. If you go up there and and you're you know you're fucking you know thrusting <laughs> thrusting dicks and being all sexy about it and shit like that, guess what? Brian guess Minor. what? Guess what? Guess what? If, if, Brian if, Minor. If, 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 there, if there's some drunk people out there, they're probably gonna be like, Ooh, you know, and, yeah. and, and it is what it is. But at the, you know, I play I play metal. I'm pissed off when I play, and and whether that's attractive or not to some people. That is the last fucking thing I'm yeah, worried about. Yeah, you know, kind of in a way, I see, like, it can be the last thing you're worried about. But at the same time, I mean, we are out there projecting our sexual power, essentially. So there, if people don't respond to it in any way whatsoever, that's kind of a letdown. I mean, if, 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 that's, your, if, that's, what you, if that's what you're all about. If you I, if you're projecting, because I, I be partially it, about, I, I get what you on a primitive level. Yeah. I understand what you mean yeah. about projecting your you know yeah, your, your sexual power. Just, I'm you're a man and well, I'm pissed off and I'm fucking. You I'm know, confident but, enough to that's the put last. myself in front of a zillion people who might just want to beat my ass for trying to act like a fucking big shot. Right, and, and let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Basically, what happens is if you're in a band, by the time that you're ready to leave with any chicks. They're already taken. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're Absolutely. taken by the guys in the audience like Jeff that are like working on them all night, buying them drinks. And then finally when they realize, I gotta wait until three? Yeah. I'm going on with this. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's, I, you know what? This, so, is, this, is a, this, is, this is a terribly low-minded adage in a certain way, but I have to just say it because uh, it, there is a moment of truth uh, to it. My friend, Britt Stanley, that I work with, uh, old guitar player, played in some bands around here a long time ago. But uh, he says, uh, a ring don't plug no holes. Yeah, oh and uh, you know uh, there is a certain amount of danger for all of us because of the fact that's suggested by that. Uh, you know, you know what? Course. You know what wraps up that danger for me? What's that? Is the fact that, like, regardless of my my level of coherence, even in my worst moment, if 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 some if someone came along and was trying, you know, just strengthen the fact that I sang in some band, my wife. Would fucking destroy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's, that's not true. that's not that's not my preventative and measure. Would fry that's, up her and the, skin and listen, eat it like pork I have rinds. pride in that. So the group, pride the groupie that. scene is not existent for local bands. Really, I mean, there's no, there's is, sometimes there's going to be chicks that are just like any other you know, time when you're. It but, is, but if we're smart, it's, we it's, ignore it. It's yeah. anyone. It's anyone that has listen, confidence. I'll I'll sum it up for you. If 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 there's a girl that's going to be after me strictly because I just sang a Motley Crue song good and that I have a uh, you know long hair and i play in a band um i'm gonna kind of be turned off by them pretty much yeah. initially yeah just because that's not every about. every human wants to about. be loved for who they are and guess what i'm not that guy on stage i am sometimes but i mean i'm a real guy too and if you want to come on with me you're gonna watch me eat a bowl of captain crunch before we go to bed <laughs> exactly and fucking you know whatever so anyway <laughs> and so the next question <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. No, uh, that was quit. great. Ain't, ain't, no, no, ain't, 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 ain't no groupie ain't, scene. Yeah, yeah ain't no groupie yeah. scene. And if ain't you're no into glory. the groupie scene, you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How much money does a band guy usually make in Dive Bomb, Cheese Pizza, Third Rail, or similar bands? <laughs> so I think he's asking about the cover band scene. You, you know, I can... off on that yeah. shit. Yeah, I think yeah. that... Uh, Travis and I are the only well, ones that might be able to speak on that. While, so, it yeah. depends. There's certain different levels of uh, cover bands. There's some that are in the entertainment end of things as far as they're playing a part or being some sort of gimmick or some sort of cover uh, tribute or something like that where they have this a little bit more of a, a niche. Um, a niche. You know, there's some bands that play just whatever. They put a set list of just rock songs. They play for four hours and they play everything from "Mama Let That Boy Play Some Rock and Roll" to "Inner Sandman." You know, right. and then, what does Dive Bomb make? Most of the time, most of the time, them guys. You know, I think that it's all it's all secular to whatever band 
how yeah. they how they build their business you know yeah. um as far as i'm concerned i you know talking money and how much people make listen we're not getting rich but we're making i'm making more money in dive bomb than i think that um a good 70 percent of other cover bands are making and that's not because they're worse or anything it's just they've selected their um avenue of, of business and right. i know that you know that's a uh they're not going to be making the kind of money that a band like dive bomb will ask for only because fuck dude i've been in this game so long i don't want to play the four hour sets anymore and and leave with 75 bucks because you could easily do that right you know in in, in original band i'd do that huh a cover band i feel like i deserve to make some fucking money doing what i do well if uh but you are well i'm I'm saying this, man. That's why we only play it once a month. <laughs> and I, well, I, no, and that speaks to this point that I want to make because, because, you know, even though, and I mean this in no negative way whatsoever, that when you go up there and you play other people's music that way, it's hard to get satisfied. So in a certain way, it kind of costs you some of your soul. Almost. I get what you're you saying. You know what I mean? You know I'm, what I mean I get by what that? You're it's like it costs you some of your like basic energy, and you know My what? That shit comes at a fucking premium. Okay, well, my wife and I had this discussion. Actually, it turned into a pretty heated discussion because she was really <laughs> upset with the fact that I don't play original music anymore. You know, she'll get out CDs, like my, my CD I did, the Zach Alex CD or whatever, it had some of my more current stuff that I had on it, and she likes that CD a lot. And for me, it's hard to believe that anybody would really like it that much. And she likes to put it on when we're sitting in the garage, and I tell her to shut it the fuck off. I don't want to hear it. Why? I, well, because I, I, it just constantly reminds me that I had something that I didn't take to the end of the road. Yeah, like it hurts mm. you. Like, like, like I let uh, too much time pass. I took it for granted that there was always still a chance. Mm. Right now is not good, but maybe next year I'll be in a position where I could really go after this. But or maybe something's going to happen for me. Maybe somebody will notice that there's a good tune on this uh. thing and all that stuff. And then I listen to the tunes and I, you know, without sounding egotistical, but of course, everybody li loves their own music. Why wouldn't you do? Why would you do it if you didn't? You know, everybody I mean, doesn't love it. And, and, and when everybody I hear a song music. that I've I've written, I'm sure that Bill Pfeiffer does this too. And I'm sorry to get too deep, but he he has written some absolutely awesome songs that got him some notoriety around here. But he should probably have you know a $250,000 house and be retired and not have to play right now he really did have the goods to where he could have retired himself with a couple yes. hits but that's not but that just doesn't happen and I'm sure that exactly yes. hear, so hearing that stuff is just a constant reminder of how you got fucking chewed up and spit out by the whole business of things where they're not taking bands don't get famous because they're good bands don't get famous because they can write songs Right. Bands get famous because they're marketable in some way, period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, you know, I mean, obviously they've got to put a hit song behind them, but 99% of the time you're listening to a performer. Right. The big money is in country music right now, and then people are performers. They're yeah. not writing music. Yeah, no. right. It's going to be ordained by that legacy. You know, it's going to be like the, the priests, the, you know, the high priests of radio coming down and giving a blessing to some local band or whatever. Right, sure. You know? So but, what you're saying is you need mass exposure in order to spring to the next level. If you want to make it, you know, the, 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 the traditional version of making it, you know, and, that's, I, and that's, I'm not even talking about like yeah, tour that's, buses. That's, you know? that's kind of an obvious statement to make, though. We've sure. all been in this game long enough that that's rule fucking number one. Well, if you had a hit song and they played it once an hour on your pop radio station for totally. one day it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter how you would have it was, a gold yeah. record yeah it, yes. wouldn't, it wouldn't matter how if bad you have any slight little hook in your song and they play it once an hour on 98.9 or whatever the fucking pop station is but I don't, and they tell you this is the next thing that's coming up all yeah. them sheep are going to go buy your single See, I, don't period. Think, I don't even think it's the song man because there are so many great songs out there they can pick and choose any more which songs, songs they want it's more about uh, the relationships that they have with other business people and how they promote people that are with, that are within their you know uh, uh, network of contacts and how yeah. that you know how that business is trying to protect. Notice the reoccurring itself. word. Yeah. Business. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We could go it, on and on no, about this stuff. But, but, but we, my whole point was this, and is, I don't know as, as far is, as is this, I'm sorry. Is this where minor disturbance lives right here? Is in this kind of conversation, no. or or should we pull it back? Because I don't know if these people are ready for these kind of conversations. You, yeah, you know, know where you know lie, either. where you lie, where you lie is, is is something that a friend of mine, Scotty Feller, brought up at a show I saw you know a couple of months ago, and you lie in the DIY side of it. 
This is your home. This is all your setup. You've invested your money in this. This isn't something that's backed by a label or, you know, even a collective. Right. This is you. Yep. This is DIY. You're doing this all yourself. And you're doing it out of the pride of having it. That now, more than ever, is the future of music. It's the future of radio. It's the He's future. Right. It's the future of the podcast. It's the people doing the stuff out of their home and they, they constantly promote. Yep. And they constantly put stuff out there. And you, you know, you have you know, you put your episodes out there, but you you know, you're doing the the little the little clips now and everything like that. Oh, I'm gonna let him go on and on about yeah, this. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> well, well, but you're doing it right. You're doing it right. And, and you're you're appealing, I appreciate that, man. You're appealing to to I'm, what gets you out there i'm a very driven young man but that's what does it now and i i think i get where he's going with this and not to try to fucking make this conversation go on forever but (laughs) but it it comes back to to uh uh you know how it is that people realize that once they start playing the game it's not for free and what i don't mean and what i mean is not that it isn't for free monetarily. Obviously, it still costs you money and things like that to try to get in the game, but there's something else that it costs you, and it doesn't have to do with money. And it also costs you that same thing when you're in a cover band, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, sure. it costs you that thing. So it, the thing that makes you mad, I think this is what started the whole deal, is the thing that makes you mad when you hear your old songs and you're like, damn, that's good. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. it right there. Is that you realize that the money that they're paying you isn't enough <laughs> well, it's never enough. It's never enough, and it, it, it's never it, enough because, because it's your fucking soul. Yeah, well, it's never it is, enough and that's why. And that's soul. why I don't want to hear it is because it's a constant reminder of a soul of, crush. Of, exactly, it's and, a reminder of a soul crush, dude. Until I can remove myself from it and just really listen to I the listen music to and enjoy it, it yeah. and just say, you know what, I fucking did that. What right. you, what Win you or you lose, need, yeah. you can think what you want of it, but I can stand right here with this behind me, and yeah. I can say, most of you can fuck off. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because and exactly, and it's not because i think that i'm better than anybody it's just like god damn you it you did it you I, did it you know there's some people that have whatever it is and there's a lot of us out there in the area they have the thing and then there's so many people that just wish they had the thing mm-hmm. and they want to be a cancer on the scene and just try to pull people back or are you trying to be good get no, back here get, get back here that shit's get everywhere. back here and i let that get yeah. to me and that pisses me off that is fucking mad that i cared what too. people thought that was my first yep. problem yep. yep yeah i cared what people thought and i started to lose trust in what i was doing because not everybody was immediately on board with it and there yep. were haters you yep. second guessed yourself because so you it was my voice believe the hate it was you my need voice gratification though right you could make you need gratification it was my voice so i felt like anything that was said about that band was a direct slam on me yeah because sure. it's my voice that people decide if they like it or not it's probably, like in your band when they hear your man. voice there's people like fuck yeah immediately yeah and then there's some people like i hate this kind of shit Dude, can we leave? that doesn't bother you does it yeah, that doesn't no, bother no, you. No, See, it no. bothered me. It yeah. did See, initially for me. I was singing like that. I was singing high notes and stuff, still doing the 80s style. Um, while it, there was an era that everything was grunge and like heavy, like deep voices. Right. Like hard hitting Alice in Chains type stuff. That the I, Yardlers. And, and so at, the popular trend was that new kind of singing. And then anybody that would see my band would immediately say, 80s yep, and that a. label was put on me and put on me and put on me and put on me and i was like so what do i do do i try to adapt to the trend that's happening right now or do i fucking write songs that i fucking want to write exactly well, let me and, ask you and win or lose man them are the songs that i wanted they, to write they were the ones man totally. that's what gets me off yeah so like guess what at the end of the day if you know you just have to realize that people didn't like it man yeah. you did and that's all that fucking matters right so, right right Brian, let it? me ask you this right now uh, and we're talking original music. If you had, and, and we can ask this from from everyone here because I'll have an answer. But if you could, if you could build a an all star band where you were the you know you were you you were your vocal you were the vocalist and you were doing original music, mm-hmm. what would you sound like? Who would you pick? Who would be in my band? Yeah, this is gonna sound really horrible. I'd be the lead singer. 
Yep. I'd be the lead guitar player. Yep. I'd be the rhythm guitar player. Yep. I'd probably be the bass player. Yep. And I'd have to find a badass drummer that can play the shit that I hear in my head. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> what about you, Travis? Um, what about you? Yeah, you know, first play, first bass, Bugs Bunny. Second bass, Bugs Bunny. Third bass, Bugs Bunny. Catcher, Bugs Bunny. Pitcher, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, because whenever I'm with different groups of people, the dynamic is always different. Of course. And, you know, as a so result. what's your dynamic? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what my dynamic is. I mean, I think it's happened. I think it's just something that happens between me and other people. You sure. know, like it's not something that I can really own. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, for me, it's uh, it's just when I'm not doing anything or that you, uses my brain or, you know, looking at something or doing something on my stupid smartphone or whatever. <laughs> right, sure. Um, then I hear this music. Sure. in my brain yeah and and it just plays over and over again it's like some kind of coping mechanism you know what i mean like it just deals with boredom by and at any music, point yeah. when you want to drag it down from the cloud yep sometimes if you get time to you get to drag that down and, out of the cloud and, and exactly it turns right. into something tangible that's exactly but, right because uh, i, I guess, develop my musical abilities sure. enough to be not able to everybody gets that it, to be able not to everybody has that not, not everybody like, has that antenna though. yeah i yeah. guess my question yeah. isn't necessarily so I don't know. What would you play? My answer is I don't know. But, I, but really, who, have true. You, who have you come in contact with? He's not going to answer that question. No, who no he, will, in, he will. And I'll, who I'll who ask have I come in right contact way. with that that, uh, that you'd be on the same like right now, this very moment? Right if I'm not in this band, Travis, who's, who's I swear to God, dude. Okay, no, it's going to be Brian Miner and Jeff Covert <laughs> and Jacob Gregory. Uh, I love you, Travis. No, but no. you know what I mean. Like to what you like, if you were to put some shit out right now, that was a reputation, a representation of you, right? Who would you be jamming? Um, with? it would be it would be me and uh, Greg Edwards, the bass player from Failure, uh, with uh, Dale Crover, the drummer from Melvins. All right. And um, and uh, now we're getting and, somewhere. And David Yao from the Jesus Lizard singing. All right. Yeah, that's Excellent. what I would do. Excellent. You already right asked there. me this question, didn't I? There yeah, was, didn't, yeah, I did. yeah. didn't I? Yeah. Now, now that's. I'd like to retell it. My answer. Please yeah, go do. ahead. <laughs> All right. That was the retelling of the answer. Gotta Sorry, get. that last one was bullshit. I, <laughs> that band would never make it. They'd fight until they fucking. <laughs> listen to me. No, listen, listen to me. Yeah. No, listen to I'll me. Save no, for I'm the fucking star. <laughs> what? Yeah. Did you see that bass run I did on that song, dude? Yeah. I'm the fucking star. I'm like the Ingve Momsi yeah. with the bass. We'd never make it, dude. <laughs> I'd kill myself <laughs> three so, times. So, 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 what would be your band then? My band? We won't recognize any of these names. No. No. Um, you might though. It would be uh Mark Slaughter. <laughs> it would be it would be uh, I did not expect that. Sorry. <laughs> on guitar it'd be uh Alex Coates from uh Doppelganger and Zach Potter from Kings. Bass Bass would be Shannon Ford. And and, and look at his band. dreamy eyes like, when he I says know, that. I I know, know. Like, if you guys are well, watching no, this, got, man, I've he's totally got, in love. Thank he's goodness, in love with it. Thank goodness got, for the erection obscuring nature of this yeah. mask. <laughs> Thanks for being honest, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I've already Wait. got I've already got Dustin Demitz and Shannon Ford and Dan Freitag in a band with yeah. so, listen, so listen. Like, I'm already there, but uh 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 you're done, man. You're done. Yep, no, that's, all you done. Get. that's all you get. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be like about 15 oh. other members too. Yeah, it's, it's I know you'd put together the fucking electric light orchestra over there. <laughs> right. uh, I, I want Jeff Lynn. I need a beer. I want Jeff Lynn <laughs> and uh, a dead oh. beetle. All right. <laughs> right, here I got one. All right, here it comes. Oh, Look at that, shit. Bud Light. It's warm. Bud Light. Welcome back. Do you want to do, do your answer? I guess. I guess my whole point from that is yeah. What was it? Would all be it? Would all be modern musicians that are active in the scene right now? Because what's yeah. going on right now? If I mean in the right environment, it's already good. But there are there are definitely pieces that I would try to put together for some sort of like all star team just to just to see what happened. And it wouldn't necessarily be me. Yeah, vocalist. exactly. I think I'd I, love to be the vocalist, but I think that if I people. I believe that if I sat down with <clears throat> Travis, right, and um, and I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a whim here. If wow. I sat down with Travis, Billy Piper, um, I like it. God, there's there's other ones. I'd even invite Chuck Murphy to the party only because he's Chuck. such a m music listener. I would say, okay, well, Chuck, you knows, have, Chuck knows everything. I'm not. Like, he knows yeah. everything. I'm just saying, if you're going to write, if you're going to try, to, or both? if you're no, going to no, no. try to write a song, <laughs> see, because I'm in, I'm I in the position Chuck. now where Me I want, I want to write songs. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I'm, I don't care too much about the performance of it. I, I'm trying to <laughs> write a song that has its own thing and has. I've never written with other people. I've always written by myself. So Shit, I'm at really? the point now where I've if. 
uh, oh, br- well, bring in, bring in Dusty from 1152, Tony from Three Years Hollow. Bring them all because yeah. I'd love to write with other people like that. Right, right. And just see where what Co-write. my idea would turn into with somebody Dude, else's input. I've never done that before. It's been so long since I see. I actually my writing started in co-writing relationships. I mean, that's how my writing actually started was with another guy who had vision. It started actually with Billy Gardner. Me and him, uh, you know playing guitars in the trailer park together and figuring out our little riffs and you know yeah. all this kind of stuff that's fun man you know it is it's great man and uh, i just never had know. anybody that wanted to play with me yeah dude we just, <laughs> did, a, we just did a harmony man yeah. fucking sweet but yeah. um you know uh with billy but but then uh but then it was me and malcolm simon in a band called unsound that was uh mm. i think a pretty decent band and then, of course um, you do. And you then, were in it, right? Well, yeah, of course. I thought, no, I actually didn't start that band. Uh, yeah. I was a metalhead and uh, joined that band, and they were already doing grunge before mm-hmm. grunge broke they because were. Malcolm bought albums from Sub Pop, so he knew yep. what that sounded like before Nirvana blew up. Yep, It was a, just kind of a weird little moment. We were on the cutting edge of something, you know, and that was really cool. And But I wasn't the songwriter in that band. I was watching somebody else write songs, and I was like, oh, you know, that's but the way. My point is I feel as though, as though if I sat down with, say, Tony or uh, Jacob Gregory or Travis Williams, Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to automatically kind of blend with your aura and sure. try to write for something that I see in you yeah, that I want course. you to add to it. I wouldn't want to do I something you'd like. I wouldn't want to whip out the like lamest 80s. You know, or something like that. Because Travis would go, no, not that. But I know what level you're on. So I would bring kind of what I'm trying to emulate what sure. you like to sure. you. That way, if you grab onto it, then you justify me. Yeah, just You say, you say yes. this is something I like. I'm going to add to yeah. this. It's, right. it's a form of respect. Yeah. You know, and, and once that common respect happens between two writers, you get a totally new color. Sure. Uh, you know, so. Well, here, but I guess my overall point was why wouldn't we as artists challenge each other why wouldn't we do you, you well I, but why wouldn't we collaborate directly why wouldn't your you know your, your dream band say it was you and travis why wouldn't you bring what you what you're good at what you what you love to the table be honest and with then you he takes it and I, brings it to a next level that's the whole point right, too, but i could too, also take it and ruin it yeah it's too late in my yeah. life to try to do them types of things yeah you what know the i fuck have does that mean well I'm, yeah. I'm, when you you'll get there you'll understand your days you know, <laughs> you're if, not old enough if you don't if you don't if you don't, don't give me that shit if you don't make it when you're 41 years old and you're still in this game it starts to kind of take a back seat to kids and fucking real life and well, shit sure. you know there's only but, so much time but, you can still pour into something that your isn't game? gonna go anywhere what's your end game is it is it just to as long as i can still sing i'm gonna sing and that's fucking a you know fucking that's a that's, that's the same way i am man i yeah. will scream until this voice fucking goes well, out there you go buddy so but we're on the i'm same not page. gonna become disenchanted about it because i'm not like king shit like it's never been about being king shit no i don't think that's what his disenchantment comes from i think the disenchantment is sort of a natural side effect of needing to be able to disengage from it because you know it can't be the center of your life anymore it's like at the end of harry and the fucking hendersons which i just watched today by the way (laughs) where he loves this beast so much that he has to slap it in the face and tell it to get lost (laughs) <laughs> and that's kind of what it's like, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. So who would be in your dream band, I don't even know. It sucks. Who would be in your dream band? I don't know. <laughs> all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is, is Brian, <laughs> like, for you and, and your abilities, you should have an original band. For Did sure. I come off negative at all? I'm not trying yes. to say that I'm like, oh, I'm so sad, because I'm really no, not. No, by the way, I'm totally speaking, adjusted to this see, thing. You seem negative my, of the idea of having an original band because you because feel I, you're too I really don't have time for it. But that's, that's the problem. But, but it could be your fucking opus, man. It could no, be it, your, it can't be your fucking back burner thing. If you, that's what I no, did I the whole time, that. buddy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Quit everything, Brian. That's what Meyer. I'm trying to tell quit you. Your is shitty cover to and engage quit your <laughs> to engage that that uh, that uh, avenue. I would have to not see my kids very much. Really, I would have to go out and be away overnight, away from my family a lot. Sure. I mean, where are you going to go? You're going to go straight from the fucking Rusty Nail to the fucking Madison Square Gardens? I don't think so. There's no, going to be a whole long time there when you're going to have to fucking leave your well, family. Now, if, I, I, I'm just telling you. Sorry, I'm answering the question. So, yeah, sure. at the end of the day, 
I like being with my kids and I'm 41 now. I'm not going to make it. And if I did, I'm not sure that I want to live that life anymore. Okay. You understand? I fucking completely get it. The last thing that I'd really want to have happen to me is to make it. Sure. So eh, I'm cool with that because to me, I fucking have made it. Sure. I still okay. stand. Right. I Let's still stand. Right. I still respect. stand behind an arsenal yeah, right. of music that I created. Respect. That I'm, you know, I'm just saying. I've, I stand behind an arsenal, and I, uh, I guess you can call it. You know, like I said, people know Brian Minor, and they know Brian Minor because I stepped into this world. And at the end of the day, I can't go a day without somebody recognizing me and knowing me who for who I am because of what I do. So I've left a mark. Fuck I that. feel good about that. Fucking it. You know, I tell everybody if you if you're lucky enough to get that, that's a blessing, man. Sure. Sure. It's a blessing to be able to have somebody come up to you and say, dude, weren't you that guy in Drop Hammer, man? You guys were fucking awesome. And that's all that matters to me. And, and not even that they're justifying it. It's just that I still exist. Right. You're yeah. eternal once you've written music and put it out in digital form. <laughs> yep. You're fucking crazy, man. So I'm, I'm, I happy. Still come to I'm happy where I'm at. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm very happy. And that's not just because I lost the game. I'm telling you, I'm glad that I lost the game because You're I'm winning. not sure that I'd You're be sitting here. You're winning the game. That's You're winning point. the game. That's right. my point. So yeah. that's, that's my point, too. Yeah, my point. Fuck all right, so the cool, answer man. to the question is, is cheese pizza makes more than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to that Somebody now. had to say it. I'm not gonna, man. I'm not gonna. I think that's where the good shit happens. Yeah, is right yeah, there. You know that was I mean? excellent. Yeah. So anyway, that, that I'm not gonna do the last question from him because it was it's kind of a question that I you know we just don't have time to answer right now. Sure. So, but I wanted to end the episode with you know we need to in the whole beer chug thing, which I got three entries for. Yes. Really? I like this. We got beer chug entries. I do have beer chug entries. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, so I would just want to go through these for you guys and, and uh, put them in order of where they came in. Oh. We had a, a submission from, you know, Shannon Choning, of course. Yes. And we had a submission from... Um, uh, oh, my cousin Dustin Miner. Oh, yeah. Dustin Miner, bass player for Night Street Memory. Night was Street it like Memory. gone in like two seconds? Uh, hold on, buddy. And then we had uh, <laughs> we had a third contestant that was from Sweden. Apparently, oh, shit. Uh, didn't speak English. And we'll show you that in a second. But uh, I'd like to play the first entry. This is Shannon Choning. Okay. 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 So this is the first beer chug that we got here. All right. And close that. Drink it, Shannon. All right. Here we go. Where? All right. Here he is. All right, so here's his beer chug. All right, Brian Miner, this is for you, Miner's Purpose Radio, best fucking iPod, or the best fucking podcast ever, 12-ounce beer challenge in this ridiculous pouring down rain. <laughs> the cup's going to be fuller by the time he drinks. The Respect. You ain't got balls, motherfuckers. Let's get it done. Oh, shit. That's probably uh, at least 16 ounces by now. Yep, yeah, right? It is. Look at that. Boom. There it is, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> His voice dropped like an octave. Yeah. Let me just tell you, that was a delicious beer. I'm gonna be honest with you. I bet yeah. he was about to fall over because I bet that you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't breathe for like 15 seconds there. You know? no. so, so the challenge no. is 12 ounces. Uh, Shannon, you so, showed us your balls, and you did they are job. beautiful. Yes. And you, you came in third place. Oh. oh my goodness, bronze medal. I need to play the uh, second place entry now. Okay, second. This one is by a certain, uh, and then second place. This is the first runner up. First runner up. <laughs> <laughs> the first loser. <laughs> first year last. It's Dusty Miner. Oh. Here it comes. Let's and right now, there's people going, bullshit. Yeah, this dude has. So here, here's. Here here's All right. We are recording live. Yeah, right. uh, Dustin's doing a. No, he's not scared at all. Dude. Yeah, there, he just cracked it. He's got his cup. This is for you, Brian. So just so you, um, it's gone. You don't see this. Okay. All right. This takes a while. He's it, they started they filming really, way too soon. They really, they really played this out. Okay. I, that's why I deducted he, points. He did it really yes, fast, but I deducted points for the long 16. lead. Oh, he wanted, he yes. wanted to let you know how much that's he was drinking. Uh, as I can see, he likes a little head oh. with his beer, <laughs> well, which is uh, the way I it's like it. It's a Miller Lite. He's and nervous. he's got a professional move coming up here to get it? the foam down. If You okay. you might notice. I couldn't drink Does he bust some, some of the, the, the grease nose. off the nose? The grease off the nose. Yep. Yep. Access You saw that. That's a professional move right there. That is black belt beer drinking right there. I've watched my dad do it. Rock and roll Endlessly. The sleight I'm of hand. With that Dustin movie. Miner oh, is a rock and roller. And by the way, it Dustin works. Dustin is going to slam this beer when it comes down. Because grease, this is going to be absurd. I've seen it. Out of your way. Here it comes. <laughs> Here he goes. I can still out drink it, but I can't drink the fucking beer. Jesus H M F Christ. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. 
gone. That's pretty good. Oh, God. Oh, That's wow. Pretty good. <laughs> wow. Jesus, it's inhuman. It is inhuman. That's a ninja right there. That's that a beer drinking yeah, ninja. Nice. Beer, okay. beer drinking ninja. Do not try this at home. Cut the video because he's about to go puke a big <laughs> foam <laughs> in the fucking toilet. No, he looks like he could do that probably yeah. six times in a row yeah. before he even. He's got to wait a little bit yeah. in between Dustin each one. Though. He's yeah, related to me. He, he can handle his he alcohol. <laughs> well, yeah, he's a, hey, hold on. We'll be right back. So, uh, After these messages from um, Michael and Grill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good enough for you? Is that, my, is yeah, that a good radio guy? I'll just be a drunk guy. Awesome. Like, Fuck this song. I'm not even going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> you tell tired, me why. Right, so play this. tired of these trite yeah. lyrics. They're weak champion. symbolism. So let's get to the metaphors. champion. All right. You guys ready for the yes, champion? Absolutely. Okay. You, you'll, uh, you'll have to understand that she didn't speak English. Oh, joy! So... Um, <laughs> So uh, you and, just and, so inadvertently I, told us that uh, we're I had about to, to see a woman. Yeah, well, like there's only one left. So, but this one, uh, I had to one subtitle one it for you guys. Okay. 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 So, because you don't know what she's saying, but uh, I had it translated. Oh, you translated. And I found out what she was saying. So, oh. as she was doing this beer chug. So, Brian here, has a 12 inch this penis. Is, this is what we got. All if right. you can read fast enough. Okay. Very good. Okay, this is nice. <laughs> We've been doing it wrong all along. <laughs> Brings up a whole discussion. Oh, she had a little jitter, a little jitter in there. But she drank around twice, and no camera tricks were used. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So that was the <laughs> that was the that was the champ. That's that the was champ, huh? brilliant. I can't I can't even Down like does, dispute that. No, no, does she get tickets or something? Yeah, what she wins is the prize this week is a date with Jeff. Yeah, oh cool. <laughs> you get one luxurious uh, oh. luxurious uh, evening at uh, <laughs> at Hardy's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So so it's great Hardy's because Hardy's it's great because she doesn't speak English and Jeff doesn't speak. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so I can't with you clowns. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just got a referee sometimes. I'm not. Sorry, Jeff. You didn't get to talk that much this last That's all right. We this, know we you love you. Let you're, you're, gorgeous. you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. You know you know what you should do? Like at the end of every show, it should be Jeff's corner. Well, and, and like Jeff, just like so, Jeff. We Jeff, put a little cardboard you, box. In the Jeff, corner. how do you feel? How do you feel about the seafood that's coming from Hey Jeff? Hey Jeff, I've got a green screen. I could have you walk off to the side <laughs> and like <laughs> tell people the weather and shit. You know, right. Yeah. And now Jeff with the weather. We're gonna open this up to a whole new ball yeah. game here. Yeah. What's going on in Phoenix? It's hot. It's hot. It's <laughs> hot. All right. I so like we're the cups. Yeah, I know. I want to yeah. say, hey, check it out. We got uh, new minor disturbance radio cups because we're homos. <laughs> but uh, I thought they were pretty cool. You have to have a cup, like on the Jay yeah. Leno show, you know, or whatever. Sure. So, Athletic supporter. Yeah, and you could own one of these cups for 10 bucks. $10? That's it? 10 bucks. They're oh, custom shit. made. They I'm cost a, me a little bit of money because yeah. I didn't get I'm that a, many made. So no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pony up the dough right away. I might actually get one of these. Well, for, for you, sure. they're free. That's you're, not really? Yeah, you're on the payroll. Really? Absolutely. Dude, I'm going to start drinking my beer from one of these things. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to broke our half price cup right now. <laughs> Good luck with that, man. He's a, he drives a hard bargain. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what was this? Episode 20, 21, something like yeah, that. 21, 20. Blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Next time it's going to be some of the same old stupid bullshit that we're talking about right now. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying yourself because yeah. we are. <laughs> so, uh, see you next time, guys. Right, see you. America. We love you. <laughs>